Folks, we are just a month away from the NHL trade deadline and already one of the biggest moves of the year has come. The Flyers and the Ducks out of nowhere announce a mega deal involving two younger players that I thought were cornerstones of both teams. But now they're getting flipped for one another with more details as well. But what has this trade become? How did Cutter Gauthier, Dreamy Drysdale, and more get dealt? Well, watch till the end. We're going to go through every part of this deal, all the details and all the rumors leading up to it. And hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content and trade and content as we lead up to the deadline, which is looking like a doozy. Just out of nowhere, as tonight's NHL games were about to start, the Flyers put out a tweet to just basically shock the entire NHL, saying that they have acquired Jamie Drysdale and a second round pick in 2025 for Cutter Gauthier, who hadn't yet signed with Philly and apparently wasn't going to sign. You can see the initial word here from Frank Cervelli saying sources close to Cutter Goche inform Flyers organization he did not want to play in Philadelphia. So apparently Goche went to Philly, especially after this World Juniors, and said that he didn't want to stay with the Flyers. And then Elliot Freeman continuing to pour on the drama here, saying that Philadelphia had a lot of trouble trying to meet with him during the World Juniors. Belief was he preferred not to play there, so the Flyers ended up making this blockbuster of a deal. And boy, is it a blockbuster? We got two prospects here that are amazing on their own positions. Cutter Gauthier, who just won gold with the U.S., had a clutch goal in it and had just a few amazing moments and was one of the U.S.'s best players throughout. You got J.B. Drysdale, who recently came back from injury, of course, is a former top 10 pick by the Ducks as a D, has performed well offensively while he's been there, and you got an incredible exchange here of incredible talents. Again, this was a trade that nobody was expecting. I was not even close to expecting. I fought for Philly, especially as Gauthier was coming in as a centerman, especially this year, Boston College, that we, we'd see him transition on as that first line center of the future for Philadelphia. That was something that was looked at as a big need for them. And of course, a Gauthier being drafted all the way up at fifth overall. I thought there were some pretty good connections there between Gauthier and Philly, but I guess not. But you guys know how we do. We'll try to make sense of this deal piece by piece. And let's first start out with Cutter Gauthier, who we've talked about a lot on this channel and leading up to the World Juniors as well as a cornerstone of this U.S. team and of the Philadelphia Flyers future, but now with the Anaheim Ducks as a 19 year old, you see, of course, being a former fifth overall pick by Philly, six foot two, 194 pounds. We know the shot that he has on him this year at Boston College. He's been dominant 23 points, 13 goals, 17 games. It was brilliant at the World Juniors as well. This is going to be a fantastic top six player for you. And it's kind of miraculous to see the turnaround that we saw from him after his draft year, where I think he was a little bit more of a versatile Matthew Boldy type. He's He's really exploded onto the scene and showed that his potential could be even above that. And I think especially for Anaheim, who's already loaded up on a lot of young forwards, this can make things really interesting. Like I tweeted out, though, you just look at the forward options here, and there are just so many. you got Leo Carlson, Trevor Zegers, Macy McTavish, Troy Terry already. And now you add Cutter Gauthier, who brings in some more skill, brings in some incredible shot capacity as well as his size, too. And this top six is going to look absolutely deadly. I mean, who cares who's the sixth guy on this top six, it's going to be unreal. The options they have, the diverse skill set, if they don't trade anybody, this is going to be an unreal top six, maybe the best in the entire league. Now, maybe they end up training Trevor Zegos. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening. This could not be set in stone, perhaps, but Cutter Gauthier is going to be a pillar of this Ducks offense, and why the heck not? He's going to fit in incredibly, and alongside a player like Leo Carlson, forget about it. It's a done deal. He's going to be unreal. Now, if Anaheim, and of course, the trade that we see there might be some question marks about the defense going forward. You got, of course, players like Pavel Mintukov who have burst onto the scene this year. You have, of course, Olin Zellweger coming up. But I think this could be really interesting for Anaheim and especially for this next draft. I think they're out of the running for taking a forward unless, like we did in our mock draft earlier today, they end up winning it and somehow getting Macklin Celebrini. Then they'd take it first overall. But really, anywhere else besides first, I think Anaheim's taking a D. And, you know, maybe they look at a more steady guy like a Sam Dickinson or Anton Salaev. But this really changes the outlook of this Ducks future and really makes it interesting now. Their forward group is pretty much set. I mean, Cutter Goche is going to make it unreal. Him with me and Tukov, it's a match made in heaven. I will say there are people worrying about their D for the future, but I wouldn't quite yet. They're still obviously in this rebuilding mode, and I think by the time it's all said and done, they'll have drafted a D in this draft. It's Sam Dickinson, then that's going to be an unreal addition, and I think they'll be okay in the end. Though right now with how they're looking, it looks like that top six will be the strength. 
Then you go on though to what Philadelphia gets in this deal. And for basically having no leverage, basically getting Adam Fox, like the Calgary Flames did, where this UFA in college doesn't want to sign with them. I think they did okay in this deal. It's interesting though with Philadelphia, they already got Cam York as a more offensive D. You bring in Jamie Drysdale, who has not had the most successful stint in the NHL, but he's gotten his feet wet with the Ducks. And of course, as a sixth overall pick back in 2020, he's 21 years old, be turning 22 this April. You can see he's had just a bunch of injuries and it's really had him stack up in the NHL level. You can see in 2022 in his first full season, he was pretty healthy throughout, got 32 points in 81 games, but since then has just not been able to stay healthy. When he has been healthy, he's been okay, but hasn't been really able to reach even his rookie heights. And to me, just getting him healthy will be the most important thing. Now, Philadelphia's track record of keeping D healthy hasn't exactly been great over the past couple of years, but I mean, Jamie Drysdale could be really fascinating on Philly's defense. But again, the problem becomes with Cam York already being the offensive D, is that going to be too much under John Torello? Will one guy get more priority over the other? This is going to be a really fascinating development. And of course, for Philly, they also get that 2025 second on top of it. So you also have that. But I can't help but feeling like, especially losing Cutter Gauthier, the Flyers were put in a no-win situation here, but still getting a talent like Jamie Drysdale could turn out to be good here. I just think for what Philadelphia needed, they needed a player like Cutter Gauthier sooner than a player like Jamie Drysdale now, and especially considering the center hole and depth, a lack of depth really they have at the center position going forward. I think Cutter Gauthier was kind of perfect, and I think Madve Mishkov as well coming in as a next generation winger would have been perfect as well. Those two could have been dynamic together, but now I think for Philadelphia, they might have to go back to the drawing board to find a center in this next draft there's not a lot of options out there and with cutter gochier gone they did about the best they could get Unfortunately for them, I just don't feel like Jamie Drysdale was exactly needed onto this team. But at the same time, I'm really hoping I'm proving wrong, I'm proven wrong because Drysdale has gone through so much over the past few years, so many constant injuries, but I still think he is one of the better talents to come out of that 2020 draft if he's able to stay 100%. So we'll see if Philadelphia is able to utilize him. I am fascinated to see how John Torelli uses him. But as of right now, this is going to be one of the most interesting trades to look back on in a few years. Still two cornerstone young pieces, and we'll see who who gets the best out of this deal that just came out of nowhere, man. As of right now, I'm slowly leaning towards a team like Anaheim winning this deal just because of the lack of leverage. I think they just had so much to work with. And yes, you do get rid of Drysdale and it leaves some of a hole on the Ducks defense. But at the same time, I think Olin Zellweger especially is going to be able to fill the offense that Dr Jamie Drysdale uh, and the void that he gets traded for will provide. I think Zellweger will be great in that position, will be able to be the succession. I think especially Especially with Zellweger coming in, he made Drysdale a little bit more expendable almost. Cutter Gauthier, though, is a rock star, and this Ducks team looks a lot better for him being on this roster. I mean, honestly, he could sign and the, the, at the end of the season, play a few games at the end of the year, and look fantastic already. I mean, Cutter Gauthier just plays such a mature game, but we've seen the offensive ceiling just get raised and raised every single year with him, and I would be shocked if he's not a franchise face for this Ducks team, just racking up points along the centers that they already have. I mean, if you want to talk about a crazy line to have to go against, playing against McTavish and Cutter Goji on the same line, that's just brutal. But I think especially it gives them the versatility. If they want to play with McTavish, that'd be sick. If they want to play with Leo Carlson and the unreal talent that he has passing wise with Cutter Goche's shot. This is the options that Anaheim has. And honestly, they're in the best position right now for it. Even though right now I'm going to favor Anaheim to win this deal, I want to know your thoughts down below. If this crazy out of the woodworks deal, who wins? Is it the Ducks? Is it the Flyers when it's all said and done? Gauthier versus Drysdale. What are we thinking? Let us know all your thoughts down below on this mega deal. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online, all the Flyers and Ducks fans as well to get this crazy deal out there. And I will see you in the next one. Uh, also, click on this card for all my trade number content right in one playlist. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.